Welcome to Live Loud, Live Like Outrageous, Uncompromising Disciples. So glad you could join us again for Live Loud. Today it is great to have you with us and I hope that you have had a fantastic week. Last Sunday was the start of our new mini-series and we're going to carry on with that today. So here we go with part two of No God, No Life. You see, knowing God more, knowing God more deeply, when we begin to do that, we also begin to know what life is really all about. We begin to realise how to live life to the absolute fullest. And last week we started by looking at one of the attributes of God, which is that God does not change. So we're going to look at another attribute of God today. And if we remember this word attribute, it means uh, who we are. It's innate within us. And so we're going to be looking at who God is, what makes God, God. And so today's attribute is this, that God is faithful. Why don't you just spend a few moments with those that you're with discussing what you think this word faithful actually means. Go for it. You see, the dictionary defines faithful as being loyal and dependable and steadfast. And all of these words definitely apply to God. God is faithful. But what does the Bible say? We're going to look in two passages, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament. So like usual, if you've got it on your phone, get ready to look it up. Or if you've got an actual Bible book, then grab it and let's look this up together. Well, I have here my Bible, as you can see, and it might not look that much from the outside, but I love my Bible because it's got these nice big wide margins in it so that I can draw or write things to remind me of what God has said. Anyway, we're going to be looking up, first of all in the Old Testament, we're going to look up Deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're going to be reading from verse 9. Here's what it says. Understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commands. Well, that made it really clear. God is faithful and he lavishes his unfailing love upon us. But what does it say in the New Testament? Well, now let's look up from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. Here we go then, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Those words are just absolutely amazing. That even when we are unfaithful, God is still faithful because he cannot deny who he is. In fact, all of these attributes of God that we're going to be looking at, they're all linked. They're all interwoven. God is all of them all at the same time. So last week when we said God does not change, that means he doesn't change. So when we say that God is faithful, that means he is always faithful. Even when we're not, he's not going to change his mind about us. And that is absolutely amazing. So what does it mean for us today, now in the present, knowing that God is faithful? Well, here are three reasons why knowing God like this means knowing life. Number one. 
Well, before I tell you what number one is, we're gonna play a really quick game. So I'm gonna show you a quick picture for about five seconds. Have a good look at it, and then I'm gonna ask you a few questions and see if you can answer the questions from the picture you have just looked at. Right, here we go, question number one. How many people were in the photograph? Nice easy one to begin, have a quick think. The answer is five. Yep, there were five people in the photo. All right, try this one. What was the color of the swimming costume that the lady who was standing was wearing? Did you see it? What was it? Well, the correct answer was pink. Well done if you've got that. Okay, here's another one. What was the number on the t-shirt of the man who was holding the plane? Have a little think. The answer is he wasn't wearing a t-shirt, so there was no number. Tried to trick you with that one. Don't know if it worked or not. Last one, here we go. Number four. How many people had their arms above their heads in the photograph? And the answer was six. Well done if you've got that. You might have said eight, but I felt that the person who was doing that, their arms weren't above their head, they were on their head. How did you get on with that quiz? Did you get them all right? It always amazes me at how quickly we can forget things. You may not have been able to answer all of those questions because it might have just gone out of your mind straight away. I'm certainly one of those sorts of people, I think. But you see, God never forgets. To say that God is faithful, it means that God will always remember us. He faithfully thinks of us and loves us and looks out for us. He does not forget us. He knows who we are. He doesn't forget when we're sad. He doesn't forget when we are happy. He remembers us. In fact, the Bible tells us that he knew us before we were even born, that he thinks about us. There's even a verse in the Old Testament that tells us that God sings over us. Such is his joy of knowing us. God never forgets about you or me. Number two. You see, the second thing is knowing that God is faithful means that God never fails. He never has and he never will. I don't know about you, but I've failed loads of times in my life. I remember the day that I had an exam. I woke up nice and early, got myself ready, ran to the bus stop. I had loads of time before the bus arrived but the bus didn't arrive. I waited, I waited, and no bus turned up. So in a panic, I then ran to the train station, got on a train to the town where I lived, and uh, then I had to run up a really steep hill for about 15 minutes before I finally got to my college. I ran into the college, I ran into the uh, exam room, and there was one table waiting for me. I was 25 minutes late for the exam, and I sat down, and I was shaking so much because I was so out of breath. I picked up my pen, and I couldn't even write for about 10 minutes because I was just too like uptight about how late I was and obviously I failed. Thankfully, I was able to do the exam again because it was just a, a tester, but I really did fail. I don't know about you, I'm sure there's been times when you've failed. Perhaps not an exam, but something maybe not really that important, but you, you can remember it as a time where you failed in your life. Well, what about this for a failure? I've got this book here about failures for my birthday this year, and there's this great story of PC Dean Cunningham who was uh, obviously a policeman, and in 1997 he had this brainwave when officers were unable to execute a search warrant on a building to which the only entrance was a closed steel door. PC Cunningham showed his uh, brilliant idea of being the master of disguise. So he decided to uh, dress up as a postman and pretend he was a postman. And so he went up to the door and he knocked on the door and he heard a voice back say, who is it? And he called out, it's the police. 
well, that is a big failure. But what about you? I'm sure you've got stories you can tell, perhaps funny ones, perhaps ones which were a bit more like, ah, I wish I hadn't failed at that. You see, the truth is, God never fails us. We can sometimes think that God lets us down, but he doesn't. He's always good. He's always loving. He's always truthful. God does not fail us. And when we know God is faithful, we can hold on to that truth. Number three. Finally, God is 100% reliable. Completely, totally and utterly reliable. God doesn't take back his promises. God isn't dependent on us for his faithfulness. His faithfulness is there regardless of what we are like. Because this is who he is like. God is faithful. That means trustworthy, reliable, completely steadfast. God never forgets. God never fails. And God never takes back a promise. God is faithful. No God, no life. Mm-hmm.